everyone. My name is Heather Anderson, and I want to thank you all for joining me today for my presentation. Um, so my presentation, sorry, I'm going to start by talking about my passion for social work. Now that stems from my personal experiences and the gaps that I saw from the other side of the fence. And so that really has pushed me to get to where I want to be today, which is doing my final presentation for the Bursar degree. And I'm really excited to see where this degree is going to take me. So domestic violence, what's missing? A social worker's quest for action. So I'd first like to acknowledge the fact that domestic violence actually isn't the correct term in New Zealand anymore. The term used for domestic violence is family harm. But I've decided to keep domestic violence because I believe that there are power in words. And for me, domestic violence holds that power. So I'm going to stick with domestic violence. I hope that's okay with everyone here. I'd also like to acknowledge that violence happens in every form of, um, sorry, not just with um, men's violence towards women. But for the pre uh, purpose of this presentation, my scoping exercise has only been focused on men's violence towards women. So it's not to discredit any other violence. So, what is domestic violence? The um, 1995 Domestic Violence Act categorizes well. domestic violence into the following subheadings, which are psychological, physical, emotional, sexual, emo uh, financial, and spiritual abuse. But there is one word that I feel can capture all of these words and carries the true essence of what domestic violence really is. And that word is fear. Fear is a tactic used by domestic violence perpetrators to have power and control over their victims. And I put that in quotations because I dislike the word, but for the purpose of this exercise or presentation, I'll be using the word victim. So fear is a debilitating, um, feeling that leaves you feeling um, less than worthy or lacking in self-confidence. And that brings me on to power and control. So like I said, power and control is a tactic that um, perpetrators of domestic violence use against and have power over the victims of domestic violence. So the, um, the first image here is the power and control wheel. Now this is very similar to my inspiration, Pat Craven, who is a social worker back in the UK, who has written books um, named The Hidden Hurt and The Dominator. And they talk about the red flags and the, um, the telltale signs of what it is to be in a domestic violent relationship. So this tool here is perfect for social workers to utilize, not only for us as the professionals, but also for the victims of domestic violence who actually identify themselves what kind of relationship they're in. Because unfortunately, it has been known that many um, survivors of domestic violence did not realize or imagine that they could be in this form of relationship. The cycle of abuse is another tool used by social workers that is a really good tool to identify um, that abuse may be happening within a relationship. It is also really good for victims to be able to see the reality of domestic violence and to hopefully be able to accept and acknowledge that this is where they're at, but it is not where they're going to end. So this quote here is by Alex Miles, and she's a lady that has, um, she escaped her um, domestic violence abuser and she's written a blog and it's called CPTSD and me. And that stands for chronic post-traumatic stress disorder. Now that's something that can happen when you um, have been going through chronic um, traumatic experiences, which is long term. Um, now I really resonated with this and I really love this quote and I understand it. And my hope is that you can understand it too. And I'm saying this because there are absolutely, I'm gonna take absolutely away because I don't know why I said that, but there are words that are used so, um, such as, why don't they just leave that I really disagree with. So many people might wonder why I or anyone else would remain in this kind of environment. But by the time I realized I was in extreme danger, I was already mentally and emotionally weakened and debilitated. So that brings me to the reality of domestic violence. That's the statistics of 
domestic violence and the reality of it here in New Zealand. So, every five minutes, police are called out to some form of domestic violence related incident in New Zealand. The numbers of domestic violence related incidents have risen considerably from 2006, where there were 69,729 to 2016, it is now 118,910. That number is not okay. I can see many beautiful women in this room right now. Now, unfortunately, one in three women will be um, subject to some form of domestic violence throughout their life. And I'd like to reiterate, this is not okay. If we look at it from a bicultural scope, now unfortunately, the statistics show that Māori are 2.8 times more likely that it needs to have um, the space for people to recognise and to understand what I'm talking about when I say words have power. So society teaches, don't get raped, rather than don't rape. The emphasis is on the wrong place. Instead of putting the emphasis on perpetrators, we have a light shining on the victims of domestic violence. And then these questions such as, why didn't you just leave, pop up, and more victim blaming and shaming comes into play. So what's being done? We have the social, uh, Ministry of Social Development. We have the Ministry of Justice. We have national policies and laws that are in place that are amended over time to try and adapt to our situation and our current society, such as the Domestic Violence Act 1995. We also have the most amazing organizations and people that go under the radar a lot of the time. And these people are SHINE, Women's Refuge, Shakti, Aute um, Emerge Aotearoa, uh, to Fari Marama, and there are so many others that are flying under the radar that people will probably never come across until you are one of the statistics. But these all happen after the fact. So what's missing? Well, what I have seen through my scoping exercise is the fact that we're sitting at the bottom of the cliff waiting with an ambulance. Whereas I want to be standing with all women of New Zealand and anyone else that wants to join me, stand up and build a fence at the top of the cliff, um, making sure that we don't allow our women to fall off. Now this is a preventative strategy. This is what we are lacking with domestic violence in New Zealand. And this is proven with the, st with the statistics. Now we really should congratulate ourselves because a um, Justice Minister Amy Adams in 2017 actually says that New Zealand has reached the pinnacle of world number one in the highest rate of domestic violence in the developed world. This is incredibly high. So my tactic is going to be, instead of being reactive response, I want to bring some preventative. And like Nelson Mandela here says, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And I accept that challenge. And I plan on making an educated program for youth in high schools, aged 16 to 18 years, showing the red flags of domestic violence, what, what um, really healthy relationships look like, what they feel like, and what they don't, and, of, and also consent. These things are incredibly important if our future generations have any chance of changing those disturbing number of um, domestic violence rates in New Zealand. And I intend to be one of those people standing there building that fence along with my future generations and the generations before and now. So how do I plan on doing that? I'd like to introduce you to my very own theoretical framework which is named the NEMA approach. If you kindly look at the middle word here, Nemo, that actually spells women backwards. I should probably guess it's a woman-centered approach, and my passion really lies with women's health and well-being, and that is what the Nemo's approach is all about. It's, about. it's committed and dedicated to empowering women within domestic violence relationships to find their voice again to be able to build themselves back up because they can have the power. They can take back that control. 
and they will do it with the new Mao approach, hopefully, because I hope for change and I hope for hope. And that is what the new Mao approach is about. So stay safe, stand tall, and know you are never, ever alone. Too long have New Zealanders been burying their heads in the sand and saying, it is not my business. It hasn't happened to me. I don't need to worry about it. It is my business. It is your business. And it will never, ever be OK. Thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to your questions after I've stopped looking. <laughs>